Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We kick things off with football and the UEFA Champions League. Match day three of the group stage ended a short while ago. In Group G at the Wangdorf Stadium in Bern, defending champions Manchester City beat Swiss champions Young Boys 3-1 for a third consecutive group stage victory. We have the highlights. Montero weaving away into the area and it's a hammered cross shot which Edison has pushed away to the near post and headed wide goodness me it's a really good early chance Rodri stooping here yeah they play that ball into the near post there I think that was a bit of barging at the near post by Diaz it comes to Rodri very quickly Grealish here floating into the area and put over the top of the crossbar by Matias Nunez and that's two really good City chances already a little flick from Nunez into Haaland good ball that Grealish Haaland's heading into the area Grealish went for goal and Racioppi made a hash of it Nunez couldn't put it away Doku might camera is there the one he should hold on to it's a bit lucky Doku Bloom and Montero in front of him Doku onto his right boot good hit Relatively straightforward save for Racioppi. Matias Nunez with this corner kick. Oh, Racioppi denying Ake. Was it Rodri? Kovacic and Rodri clipped invitingly, and Ruben Diaz and following up is Akanji to score for Manchester City. The Swiss international, back in his home country, touches Manchester City in front. Just here, it's a decent save from him, but it falls nicely for Akanji. He still has to get above it. And here's an opportunity for Elia, who scores! Mishak Elia for young boys, it's 1-1. Well, we talked about the intelligence of Lewis, not on that occasion. He tried to play Elia offside. I think he was onside. And what a lovely little chip. Very difficult on an artificial surface to get underneath the ball and lift it over the goalkeeper. Ruben Diaz with the forward ball. Kovacic, Grealish. And still, and still. Great block by Nias. Grealish. To penalty for handball. Grealish's shot was blocked by Sheikh Nias and the referee has decided either that it was handball or it's a foul on Rodri, probably the latter. Yeah, yeah. that's a foul, isn't it? It's a foul. Haaland against Racioppi. Scores for Manchester City. Keeper went the right way, but there was just too much power off the left boot of the Norwegian. That was a... Poor pass, didn't really look. Gamvula, here's Haaland, and here's Alvarez. And that's surely the game for Manchester City. And it is the handball that he'll be looking at. Just there. Mm. Handball. No goal. Lewis. Rodri. Nicely done. Haaland. Oh, it's in. Devastating finish from Erling Haaland, and that will see Manchester City home and dry. Well, it's a great bit of play, Rodri to start with. Then Haaland, I talked about his right foot, he doesn't use it that often. Not many of his goals come with his right foot. But... Ake. And the referee decides that that will do it, and Pep Guardiola tells his players to go and thank the support of the travelling Manchester City fans. All right, so City, they continue their unbeaten record in the Champions League and team. They were unable to keep a clean sheet. They have gone six games where they've been unable to keep a clean sheet. But as they say, three points, very, very important. No injuries as well, and we'll get into that because, you know, City has been riddled with injuries for some time. So, Manchester City, 
getting across the line? Yeah, first of all, the, a spirited performance from young boys. They, they really made City work um, in aspects of that game today. Went to the half at nil all and um, City just having too much firepower, though, pulling away at the end. But I think young boys can um, take a lot of credit for the way they approached that game today and, and how much they pushed Manchester City. But when you have so much quality in your setup and the goals can come from just about anywhere, there is always the possibility um, that you can step things up and take the game away from your opponents. And I think that's what happened today. And Hurling Allen scoring a couple of goals, Lance and Mariah. And when he was leaving the field, he was applauded by the opposing supporters, which you don't often see. Yeah. But I think it speaks to his place in world football at the moment as one of the very best out there and the very best striker in the game right now. Yeah, pretty much unstoppable in the box, isn't he, Erling Haaland? Because even that right-footed strike there, um, the way he got that shot off very quickly, he just shifted the ball onto his right foot, but defenders weren't far away from him, including the defender who immediately faced him. And he knew that he, got, he had to get the shot off quickly, which he did. So I thought that was good, you know, technical work there by, by Horland. Mm -hmm. And um, to young boys' credit, as you said, Ricardo, they're not a bad team. Domestically, they are number two in Switzerland at the moment and doing reasonably well. I think they've lost just one of their ten games. And defensively, they're one of the best teams in um, the domestic league. So their defense stood up quite well today. As you said, nil all at halftime, 1-1 one, one at one point. So they were in the game for a long time, but Man City's quality... Uh, did them well in the end. Yeah. yeah, and I also want to add to him that Pep Guardiola, he made six changes from the team that beat Brighton on the weekend. Uh, we saw Jack Grealish getting the OK in the starting 11. And I think that's worth mentioning because from for some time, Duku, the young Duku, was getting the, um, he was going ahead versus Jack Grealish. Yeah, and, and, and I just want to make a, a quick point, Mariah and, and Lance, just back on Erling Haaland quickly. Um, you spoke about the goal today, Lance, which was with the, the right foot. Yes. You look at the Brighton game on Saturday and you saw one, as far as I'm concerned, equally as brilliant, if not better, and that one came with the left foot. So the, the quality of Haaland, whenever he gets a sniff, that's all he needs you know yeah. all he needs is a sniff and he's able to put these goals away whether it's with the right foot left um, or with the head even even this penalty yeah the goalkeeper guessed the right way but there was so much power behind it that he really didn't stand a chance unstoppable in the box I think that really is a hallmark of, of uh, Erling Haaland's game at the moment just unstoppable in the box yeah, well, Manchester City will feel happy that they were able to walk away with those points and will hope that they can continue being unbeaten in the Champions League. While in Group F at the San Siro Stadium in Italy, AC Milan welcomed French champions Paris Saint-Germain. As expected, the matchup did not disappoint. Let's take a look at the highlights. Getting a little bit of open green grass in the middle of the field, and Bappe gets there. And he will take on the shot, which is rifled. Man, you're able to watch it fly past. Great run initially from Colo Moane. And then again, that's when Mbappe comes to life. When you give him the ball, he can go either way, as I mentioned earlier, inside, outside, take people on. Zaire Emery, it's a desperate cling on to him from Rinders, but Zaire Emery has shrugged him off. Advantage played by the ref, and Mbappe looking to take advantage. Of course he's done that. That always looked likely from the minute he got himself in that position. After superb work from the 17-year-old Zaire Emery. You know, he can be out of the game for long periods, but the minute Zaire Emery resists that challenge and gives Kylian Mbappe the chance to go on the outside, then all of a sudden, Kalulu's got a problem. He can't get so tight. He's not quite sure which way Mbappe's going to go here. Brilliant work from the young man there. But he can go left, he can go right, decides to go right, and then hits it so early through the outstretched legs. Mainyan's got no... And ball shouts, but I think it came off the back of Tamori. PSG still have the numerical advantage here, though. And it's Dembele. And he's got the shot in. Oh, it's brilliant. Clinical. 2-0 PSG. Usman Dembele's first goal since joining from Barcelona. Is that a foul there? I tell you, it's a clumsy challenge, but once it gets out one on one again, yeah, you know, it looks pretty clear. Yeah, that's a that's a blatant foul. Let's see what he does now. 
think we know. We do know. It stays 1-0. Good challenge that from Calabria. He actually just kept his eyes on the ball. Oh, look at the room Dembele's got here. Parried away. It's a tap-in for Colomuani. It's 2-0 now. White shirts around him, good bit of skill, hits it hard and low. Mainyan can only parry that right into the path of Kolo Moani, who has a tap-in. Lee, it's a lovely take and turn from Zaire Emery. Pulls it back, there's Lee! And there's goal number three. Clever play from Zaire Emery in the cutback, and this little dummy from Gonzalo Ramos is perfect. So not the way that Stefano Pioli wanted to mark his 200th game in charge of Milan. He's getting a consoling word from Luis Enrique, who will be very happy with his players. Well, Kylian Mbappé, he has been on point, and of course, that win sending PSG to the top of Group F. AC Milan still winless in their Champions League run so far. So, team, Kylian Mbappé in the news for good things. This time, opening the scoring for his team. Yeah, I thought Mbappe was brilliant today, by the way. The way he was able to run at the Milan defence um, consistently and with some level of ease as well. Fikayo Timori is a quality defender and, and especially him just had no answers to what Kylian Mbappe had to deliver today. I didn't think Milan showed enough intent throughout the course of this match. Um, some would say they were not allowed to show intent, um, but for me, PSG, by a distance, the better team today. Um, and although I, I, I say Mbappe was brilliant, and, and I, he really was brilliant today, for me, it was Zaire Emery, 17 years old, and I'm just amazed at Lance and Mariah at how strong he is. You look at his ability to hold off the defenders, um, lead to this first goal you look at this at 17 years old he is such a powerful and strong young man and that really set up um, Kylian Mbappe to do what Kylian Mbappe does and that's just brilliant yes yeah, 13 goals in 13 matches for PSG and France Lance you can't stop Kylian Mbappe and of course we have to comment on the youngster because what I found this Champions League and this season, maybe it's because I'm paying more attention to the youngsters, is we're really seeing some breakout stars. And we're talking about 17-year-olds, 18, 19, you know? Yeah, well, the fact is that that level of football, a lot of 17, 18-year-old players are already based on the academy and uh, the kind of uh, developmental um, work that is done with these players. They are ready for big-time football. A lot of 17, 18-year-olds at this level. So um, it, it is good to see them coming to the fore. Um, the assist for Mbappe's goal there was outstanding. And the way Mbappe got the shot off so quickly, they shifted the ball away from the defender and the shot got off so quickly that the goalkeeper was flat-footed and, and, couldn't, and couldn't respond. The assist for Lee's goal, the third goal, was also quality as well, yes. made by Emery. So overall, he just had a great night as far as I'm concerned. And um, PSG were good tonight. PSG were really good tonight. Um, Milan didn't, as I said, didn't give as much as you would have expected especially with a team in their position and right. needing to get a, a, and, and, a good result and the second goal was shambolic defending yeah, yeah. shambolic defending so they, they have to take some some flat for that but you're right PSG were good tonight and yeah. they were coming off well they had a 4-1 loss to Newcastle in early October and they are not top of the league on at the moment uh, Monaco and Nice are leading them they're number three but tonight's performance shows you that PSG has gears yeah. and they stepped up a gear tonight and delivered. Right, and okay, so that sent them to the top of Group F. We're still with Group F and in the northeast of England, Newcastle hosted German outfit Borussia Dortmund. Let's take a look at those highlights. England's top scorers in the top flight, but this defending they need to do now with Sabitzer bursting forward. Space for Daniel Marlon. It comes back. It's two brilliant saves from Nick Pope. Outstanding saves from Pope. Marlon. Well, I'm not sure he knew too much about it. This is a brilliant break from Borussia Dortmund. Savitzer leading them forward. Daniel Marlon hit the goalkeeper. And then Fulcrude did as well. Chances. Daniel Marlon has just given the ball away here. And Isaac is running. He's got Chan 
in front of him and Gordon joining now and here is Anthony Gordon it's a huge chance it's another big save this time by Gregor Corbel good running by Gordon couldn't get past Schlotterbeck referee said the German won the ball and Royce now trying to capitalize and Schlotterbeck is charging upfield he tees it up for the Metzger terrific finish Royce back to the German defender and across came the ball and that's a beautiful finish from Felix Nemecha his first goal for Borussia Dortmund since signing from Wolfsburg it's going to get him back in sent wide out towards Fabian Scher it comes through to Wilson Tonali now it falls for Gordon Gordon off the bar comes back out and somehow is smuggled clear Trippier in towards Pope this time, comes out as far as Almiron, never controlled it. And that indeed is the last act. And Borussia Dortmund celebrate. It certainly opens up the group. All right, Nemecha getting that goal there for Borussia Dortmund. Let's take a closer look at Group F after today's results. As I said, PSG at the top of Group F on six points after today's win. Dortmund, they sit in second position again after two, today's win. Newcastle also on four points, just as Borussia Dortmund. They are in third position and AC Milan uh, they are in two points so it's a tight tight group we're looking forward to see how the upcoming matches go and of course you can catch all that champions league action right here on your home of champions so lance newcastle losing their first champions league match for this season i think newcastle looked a shadow of themselves because for some time we were praising newcastle the chemistry that we saw today and we have to talk also about Sandro Tonali. He was on the bench because of the gambling issue that has been making the headlines. But Newcastle, not looking like what we saw. Well, I thought Dortmund were good tonight, to be fair. And um, goalkeepers had a big night tonight um, because they had to work, um, well, in, in one instance, Dortmund to keep the, the, the sheet scoreless for him. But uh, Dortmund aren't, aren't a bad team at the moment. They are one of just three undefeated teams in the Bundesliga at the moment. Uh, Leverkusen and Bayern Munich, they are the two. And they're on a five-game winning streak domestically, Borussia Dortmund. And they have been a pretty solid team um, for a long time. And uh, Newcastle um, looking vulnerable tonight against a team that played really, really well. So this is a tight group, a tight group, because if you, as we just mentioned, uh, Newcastle had the big win over PSG earlier yeah. on in the, in, 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 the, in the group. And uh, to lose here to Dortmund um, would be disappointing for them. But I think, I think Dortmund earned the win tonight. They played really well, strong, both in attack and in defence. Yes. Yeah, I, I think there are some nights that are just not your nights. And, and maybe tonight wasn't Newcastle's night. I think on another night, they could have won that game 2-1. But things didn't go their way. And that happens sometimes. Tough on Newcastle, but they still have a shot in this group. Yeah, because of how tight the points are, as I just showed you in Group F. Other results on the day, so let's take a look. Barcelona, a 2-1 win over Shakhtar Donetsk. Feyenoord, a 3-1 over Lazio. FC Porto, a 4-1 win against Antwerp. There were four goals in that draw between Celtic and Atletico Madrid. Dortmund, that 1-0 win against Newcastle. Three goals to secure the win for PSG against AC Milan. RB Leipzig, 3-1 over Red Star Belgrade. And Manchester City, 3-1 against Young Boys. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, a reminder that European continental football continues on the home of champions on Thursday with match day three of the Europa League.
Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment.